welcome, welcome, welcome to The Living Room, where we listen, learn, and live together. I'm your host, Richard Martin. Glad you're here. Make yourself right at home. Now, by no stretch of the imagination, would I dare suggest that I have a creative eye. Some of you who know me might contest that. Now, Richard, we've heard you say a few creative things, and I would agree with that. But maybe beyond speech and crafting language and words, if you were to come into my home and see my fireplace behind me and the design on there, that is not a result of me. That's my wife. And when I see persons like her and others that I know, I have a respect for those who have an eye for design. Noted American designer Paul Rand once said that design is so simple and that's what makes it so complicated. So whenever you go somewhere and you say, man, this place looks amazing, I feel something, know that behind every design is an eye and often a team of eyes who spend hours pouring over inspiration to make that a wonderful experience. And such is the case with our special guest today. We go way back <laughs> and I'm excited to introduce you to her and the wonderful things she is doing as one who has the gifted eye for design. Please welcome to the living room, Miss Lindsay Odima. Hey. What's up, Lindsay? Hey, Rich. It's good to see you. <laughs> I know, long time, long time, my friend. It's been a long time. We met way back in the fall of 2005. Can you believe that, right. that, that that's that's so long, long ago? Oh, we're getting old. <laughs> yeah, we're getting old. We're getting old. In fact, I was talking with some teenagers recently, and they were about 15 and 16. And I said, um, I used to be 16 once upon a time. <laughs> <laughs> and it was crazy. It was crazy. Um, so let's jump right in. Okay. When did you first sense or know, you know what, I kind of have a knack for design. I have an eye for creativity and ways that are somewhat different than others. Man, uh, when I was a child. So my mom, I get my creativity from my mom. Okay. And so um, I attended Baltimore Junior Academy um, from pre-K to 10th grade. Mm -hmm. And so every year we would have like a science fair and, you know, random school projects. And my projects were always like over the top. <laughs> Matter of fact, one year, um, I'm trying to remember, it's my 10th grade year. Mm -hmm. um, I did a science fair project. Okay. Actually, I was not at UJA that year. I had attended public school for one year. Mm -hmm. And I did a science fair project. I can't remember, we had to do the nucleus or something like that. I couldn't remember exactly what it was. Ooh. I brought it to school and the whole class, including my teacher, thought my mother did my project. Wow. Like they just could not believe that I was capable of doing something so intricate because I've always been focused on detail. Okay. So um, I definitely have to say in my school grade years is definitely when I realized okay. that I had this creative gene. So you mentioned your mother as an inspiration. What does she do and what in her informs how you approach what you do now? Okay. I was black. I mean, this woman is phenomenal. Like, in my mind, I have, like, the perfect mom. Awesome. So, my mom, th there's several layers to this. So, mm -hmm. one of the biggest things is my mom kind of created the model I live by, okay. by get it done by any means necessary. My mom was a teacher. She lived on a teacher's salary. Mm. She found a way to put me and my brother through Christian education. We did not have a lot of money at all. Wow. And my mother always figured out a way to get it done. I remember, was it our senior year we went mm -hmm. to Paris? I, I, yep, it was. I don't year. even know how we got that done. I, I don't know. Like I don't even know what she did to make that happen. I mean... There are so many times I can recall my mom, us coming home and we needed food or we needed this and it would just appear. Like she mm. always figured out a way to get it done. And she's also my drive for my success in life. So my mom invested 
in me and my brother a lot, you know, mm-hmm. Christian education, making sure we had everything I need, even the I didn't have to go, I didn't have to go on a language trip. So being able to see those things and learn those things and gain more culture, my mom felt that those things were important. That's an investment in your child. Mm-hmm. And so I always had a mission to let my mother know that her investment was worth it. Mm-hmm. I want her to know that you did all of this and look at the outcome. Yeah. That has always been one of my missions and goals in life. You know, my goal is to one day reinvest back and my mom, yeah. I don't, yeah. I want her to want for nothing. You know, I want her to be able to live free and enjoy her life. Yeah. And so I want to be able to, to supply that for her. So, yeah. Listen, I just want to pause and agree with you that when you look back and as we mentioned, we are, we're not too old, but we're older than we used to be. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I have moments of renewed clarity about the sizable investment our parents made in us. Um, They used to say when we were at Pine Forge and Oakwood that Christian education costs, but it pays. Right. Mm -hmm. And the reverse is true too. While it does pay, it costs. (laughs) And for our parents who made that investment, uh, all kinds of gratitude are due to them, but not just the financial aspect. Uh, I remember that language and arts tour to London and Paris and Madrid. And I don't think I properly understood or had in perspective just how rare that was to be a teenager and go to not just one international destination, but three, the foods that we ate, the architecture that we saw. Um, From your standpoint, I mean, that was an amazing uh, exposure trip to design wonders, Right, you know, museums that we went to. We went to the Louvre Museum of all places. I know. And uh, I I share that same, that same, uh, same shake in my head feeling like I don't know how we got there. I'm thankful for all persons who said, you know what, we want to put this in their memory bank. We want them to be able to look back uh, over their formative years and have this sense of the world is bigger than, in my instance, Tampa, Florida. For you, mm-hmm. Baltimore, Maryland, the world is right. bigger than, than, than the states even. There's so much out there. So I'm glad that you shouted out mom. Shout out moms. Yeah. We appreciate you. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> and all the parents out there, Um, I think that all of us can say to some degree that even if it wasn't your biological parents, there were older people, um, relatives, blood related, or maybe just persons in the church or in your community whose streams of influence um, run deep within what we do now. And I'm grateful that you can see very clearly a connection between moms and that motto, listen, get it done. Mm -hmm. So speaking of get it done, let's talk about what you get done. Share with us how you came to establish your business, what it is, what you all do, and you know, I'll, I'll, I'll make it even wider. What's your mission and vision as you approach what you do? Mm, okay, we stack, we're stacking questions though. No. <laughs> Take your so, time, come at it any way you want to. <laughs> um, so one of the um one of the reasons why I, I've heard my clients like me or love my services is because we're, I'm going to figure it out. Okay. So in event planning, in the event planning world, there's always um, a tweak you have to make here and there, or there's always something that may go wrong last minute. And I'm always like, I'm going to figure this out by any right, means right. necessary. I've always been solution focused. Okay. I'm a big solution focused person. So that's just how I run my life. Sure. And it benefits me in event planning because there are a lot of times we have to think quick on our feet. We have to get this done or get that done. And so in my world, um, it's definitely uh, a, a great character trait to have. So um, that is definitely a benefit for me. Sure. So when it comes to um, how Sincerely L has developed, so there was um, a period in time where changes were happening in my life. Yeah. And I didn't understand what God was doing. Yeah. I was angry. I was hurt. Mm. I, I didn't understand what direction he was taking me. And I, I didn't like the changes because the changes were uncomfortable. Wow. 
And so I was trying to figure out how to navigate through this difficult moment in my life to then find out that that difficult moment was setting me up for success. I mean, he was removing people that I didn't understand why he was removing. He was putting things in place that I just didn't feel comfortable dealing with or dabbling in to later find out that all of that worked for the greater good. And I was so um, afraid of it. Yeah, It's funny, I um, towards the end of last year, I called a friend and I said, why is all of these good things happening to me? Mm. I said, it's uncomfortable because now I'm anticipating the downfall. I'm anticipating when is the negative going to happen? I mean, Richard, it was crazy. It was one after the next, just falling into place for Sincerely L to, to, to grow. Like everything, like I, I, I can't even remember the last time this many good things were just lined up for me. Yeah. And so I really think, shout out to God, I think that God was, uh, uh, I mean, he literally moved me in a different direction. And ever since then, it's just Sincerely L has been growing, mm. developing um, new business. I've rebranded myself. Um, I knew the type of clientele that I wanted to work with, which was luxury clientele. Mm. And so he's been setting things up to get me to that goal. And I'm just so grateful and overwhelmed. But, you know, when I told my friend that I was uncomfortable, Mm -hmm. but so many good things that was happening to me, I mean, I have never felt that way before. And I I almost felt like I didn't deserve it. Wow. Asking him, what did I do to deserve this? You know, it just, it didn't line up for me. Yeah. You know, over time, you know, I prayed and, you know, I talked to God about it and I've accepted it. Yeah. I was like, I'm just going to sit and accept this growth and, and sit in it and, and utilize it um, to the best that I can. Yeah. Yeah. I love how you were able to take us on that journey to say, listen, a lot of good came out of a difficult season mm-hmm. and in life, I think it's very easy to avoid storms, avoid difficulty. The reality is we might all have those moments where things are going apparently south Mm -hmm. and yet you're able to package it and frame it within this this idea that, listen, it was tough. It was difficult. I'm not saying that I ran to it or I would want to relive it, but what I can Mm -hmm. see is out of it was a quality of character um, that came and a certain focus and clarity I was recently reading an article on on how to gain more clarity in life. Mm. And it was somewhat philosophical, but one thing captured me. And they said, if there's if there is one thing that clarifies quickly, it tends to be pain, right? So mm. if you've ever stubbed your toe on the side of a bed or on the door frame, like, everything falls into perspective right now. Yeah. Whatever else was on your mind quickly goes away and you are laser focused on addressing that. That's true. Mm-hmm. And so it is in our lives that there's sometimes a certain kind of clarity that only comes from difficult seasons. And I'm grateful that these series of maybe unfortunate and challenging events, people leaving your life, things not materializing, provided a level of clarity for Sincerely L. Why the name Sincerely L for your event um, planning company? Okay, I get that question often. Um, so I felt like each of my designs is a signature piece mm-hmm. and I wanted to sign off on it. So that's how this sincerely Ooh. came in. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. yeah, I see it. Yeah, so that's where this sincerely came from. A lot of my inspiration comes from event designers located in the UK. Okay. Um, and, and, and so... Um, L is a nickname for Lindsay. Wow. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. wow. But it's popularly, it's usually, I'm um, sorry, is um, popular in the UK as a nickname. Sure. It is a nickname for Lindsay. And that's how I came up with L. In designs, because I didn't want to, I'm not just a, a, a planner. Mm-hmm. I'm a designer. And I didn't want to limit myself to just a box. You know, yes. I can disguise 
the limit, you know, I can, I can design anything. And I, yeah. I, did, I wanted to give myself space to grow. I didn't want to, I, sometimes I have a tendency to box myself. Okay. And in this season of my life, I, I don't want to do that anymore. I want to give myself plenty of space to grow. Yeah. So. Oh, you're preaching and you're teaching at the same time. <laughs> I'm not just a planner. I am a designer. Describe for us your first foray in designing an event. Mm. When was it? What kind of event did you design? And how did it turn out? And this can even be pre before Sincerely L was established officially. Definitely, definitely. Um, Washington and Venice University. Okay. Um, I became social vice president. Mm -hmm. I want to say my junior year. And I came in in the middle of the year. The, the university didn't have um, any, I think it was, I think it was no essay at the time. There was no student government at the time. Yeah. And I was like, I just want to do events. We need something to do. Like we mm -hmm. need to be able to do something. Like I felt like we just didn't have anything to do on campus. So I, I quickly got into the role, started doing events. And I had this big event called, um, I think it was called A Night at the Grammys. Okay. And I, did everything it was like a replica of the grammys i had awards i had the videos with the nominees and it was like things like um the funniest person on campus or who has the best smile um it was a huge turnout i had limousines and i remember the students talking about it even the following year mm -hmm. like it was a a big ordeal and for me it felt good because it kind of it kind of allowed me to believe in myself, to let me know that you have this skill trait. This is something yeah. you can do. I feel like a lot of times we allow our insecurities or our fears stop us from walking in our purpose, Ooh. from walking in our truth. Yes, we do. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And so I think that moment for me was kind of a wake up of you have this skill set Yes, you did. Wow. So from Washington Adventist University to now 2021, creative designer, um, lead creative, CEO, founder of Sincerely L. You mentioned before that with what you do, details are very important. You've always been into the details. So why are details important when designing? Because it might seem like a no brainer. It might seem kind of elementary, but to be honest, I don't know that everybody is as focused on details. And I think that differences in terms of good and great are often found in the details. So for you, why is it that important? Why do you say, no, listen, we can't leave any loose ends when it comes to what we do? Well, one of my biggest things is, um, so once again, luxury. Mm -hmm. is, is, and let me, let me talk about that for a minute. Why luxury? So my mom told me, no, first I started with my brother. Sure on the phone telling him like okay you know this is where my business is and he said one thing I've always admired about you was that you always wanted expensive things even mind you we didn't have any money so <laughs> I must have been cutting pictures out of a magazine but he said he, he's my big brother and he said you've always loved expensive things wow. and he said I always thought that that was very bold of you mm -hmm. and so my mom piggybacked on that and she said you have you've always liked nice things I've always loved beautiful grand luxurious things and one of the biggest elements that um sometimes people overlook is that luxury is about detail wow and then an another thing is when it comes to detail so every event can have a caterer every event is going to have design but the detail is how you see the client in the event the detail is how you make an event different from another event. Like I'm one of the, I, I'm very big on when, a, when the guest or the family walks into the room, I want them to feel the essence of the guest of honor of, of who, e whose event this is. Mm. I want you to know that every aspect of this event is them. And, you know, it's also challenging for me because I was telling my mom actually yesterday, I said, you know, I really have to get used to um, really 
focusing in on my clients because just because I like grand over the top things, my client is not going to always like that. Okay. And so it's, it's, it's a challenge for me, but I'm excited because it's like, I get to figure out how to construct this design to, to reflect my mm-hmm. client. And, and it's, it's just, it's just, it's just a good feeling. It's a wonderful yeah. feeling when a client walks in the room and they feel like this is them. Like, this is, oh my, this is me. Like, this is me. Sure. So how do you get to know your client? What's your process for becoming acquainted with them so that you can allow them to be reflected in what you design? So I'm very personable. And so um, you have to find boundaries though, because you can't be, you can't befriend every client. So Mm. I always try to make my interactions and things with my clients um, very relaxed, less chat, less talk. And I go beyond what do you see for this design? I like prime example, if I meet a a, a bride, how did y'all meet? Tell me how he proposed. Those are important questions to really learn their true essence and who they are. Mm. Um, Of course, through inspiration photos, um, you know, trying to really figure out what is their goal. Every event has a goal. What do we want to accomplish here? What do we want your guests to leave with or, or feel? Yeah. So those things are how I, you know, through conversations, interactions, I meet up with my clients. Um, we sit and talk, um, whether it's at Starbucks, get a cup of coffee, just so I can learn more about them. That is very important. That is an important piece of the yeah. process. Uh, one of my, um, an author of a book I read as teenagers, The Seven, Seven Habits of Highly Effective Teenagers by Stephen mm-hmm. Covey. And one of his habits is begin with the end in mind. So you begin your process, acquainting yourself with your clientele with the end in mind. What do you want your guests and what do you want to leave with so that there's this messaging? This is more than just, you know, table runners. It's more than chargers. It's more than the color of cutlery. Yo, this speaks something. My design speaks. And it's not just about me. You're saying, hey, it's about you. Why we have gathered is a message in and of itself. So when we come to the sacred moment of holy matrimony and you two will be wed, or when we come to celebrate um, either the birthday or the birth of your child, son or daughter, there's a message that people wanna walk away with. And I was impacted by one of your um, designs. I believe it was, I can't recall, you help me with this, if it was Mm -hmm. a birth announcement or a birthday. I think it was a birthday of a little boy and it was a, an animal themed. Oh event. no, that was a, a drive by baby shower. It was wow. a drive by, yeah, that was a drive by baby shower. I mean, and, the larger um, than life. And I mean, it was amazing. Yeah. How, yeah. Walk, walk us through that. Talk about how that came to be. Well, so um, this was actually um, a colleague. She's a photographer in the area and um, they, she sent me this picture. She was like, mm-hmm. Lindsay, you know, I really want something like this can you do this? And so when I looked at the picture, I instantly, so there's a process when mm-hmm. I um, do an event. There's, there's definitely a process. So, and I don't even know how to describe it. It's, it's kind of like, um, I, okay, she sends me the picture, right? And then yeah. instantly in my head, the event pieces start coming together. I okay. see of the velvet couch. I saw the bar part. I saw the greenery arrangement. Like things just start piecing together and I can visualize the event in my head. And that's typically how my process works with events as well. And so with that event, you know, everything just started falling in place. Like how can I put um, my touch on this? How Mm -hmm. can I, because you're coming to me because you want my style, my design, my touch. So how can I make sure I deliver that for you? Yeah. How, how can I do that? And so that was my whole process when it when it came to building that event. And it definitely was a success. You know, with COVID, things have changed now. Mm-hmm. So drive-by baby showers and bridal showers are definitely a thing. That was actually, I think, my first drive-by. So I really wanted to make a statement. I really wanted to uh, captivate the guests. I wanted, I wanted people to really remember sure. um, this event. And I, and I wanted... I wanted, I remember, it's funny because I had pressure. She kept saying over and over again, 
I just wanted to be beautiful. I just wanted to be luxury. And then I started to, I had a moment of insecurity. Like, what would you keep saying this? What if it, what if it doesn't meet mm -hmm. her expectations? Or what if it doesn't turn out the way that I have it pictured in my head? Or, you know, it, you start to get nervous because, sure. you know, the guests are really relying on you. And, and she just, I mean, she was great to work with. It, and she loved it. It was everything she wanted. So I was happy about that. But through my process, you know, I'm human. So I don't always have it all together. Sure. I'm not, I'm not always confident all the time. You know, there are moments where um, there's a little bit of doubt or insecurity and, you know, I have to process and work through that, you know? Right. I thank you for mentioning insecurities and kind of what can often be a roller coaster of emotion because you're providing not only a service and a product, um, but an experience, right? And yes. so with that comes an assortment of emotions going from first consultation to event and then feedback. Right. And so one of the things that I'm learning in leadership is that one aspect that, distinct, this, that distinguishes good leaders or okay leaders from great leaders are how leaders handle feedback. So talk to us about that. Leader of your company, you have a team, you've worked with clients on all manner of events. How do you process feedback when it's given to you? Especially the kind that is maybe constructive in nature um, because you pour so much into this, right? This mm -hmm. is not detached from, this is not a, a depersonalized experience where you just right. kind of, oh, I'm gonna keep Lindsay safe over here um, my heart will be safe. I'm going to no. I'm, I'm giving into myself. And so you're kind of open. And so when you're open, people's feedback can kind of hit some places, especially if it's not only five stars. You know, if I had eight thumbs, it'd be eight thumbs way up. Sometimes people might say, hey, you know, maybe next time think about this or it might come from your team. How do you process feedback in a way that allows you to say, OK, I can take that. I can process it and move forward. So one thing about me is I am huge on feedback okay. because I am big on growth. Mm -hmm. So whether it's positive or negative, how can I make this event better for the next client? Yeah. And so I love it. Um, I ask my staff, you know, I go to my clients and then on top of that, um, I process my event. I go through and critique myself. Mm. But what are things mm. that I may do differently? Um, what's something that I didn't really like how that turned out? Or, you know, what is something that I really thought was great? And, and mm. how can I make it even better? You know, so I I need that feedback because that's how I even got to, you know, that's how I've gotten to where I am now. It's right. through feedback and, and um, whether positive or negative, like that feedback has truly shaped how I do events, how I conduct events, how I have a team. Yeah. You know, I want to make sure that my team feels good. I want to make sure that my team is still invested in this. So what are things that I can do better as your boss, you know, or I, I don't like to use the word boss, but <laughs> um, the boss. As, yeah, <laughs> as the person in charge, you know, how can I do things better or, you know, how can I make this experience great for you? I'm glad you mentioned team. When it comes to developing a team and when it comes to developing your team, how do you go about communicating your core values so that it catches in the team and, and they are grounded in a shared vision that you all contribute to, whether or not, whatever each person is doing, how do you develop that kind of team? I'll be honest. It, it, for me in this field, you truly have to find people who are invested. Mm. They have to be invested. They have to care about your brand and they have to care about what services you're delivering. That is the first important piece. Um, and if you look at my team, you know, one, one, one of the, um, one of the, um, one of my team members, Jasmine Anderson, mm -hmm. we've been friends for 31 years. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I mean, that's, 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 that's my, that's my ace, yeah. you know? And so with that, and so, and a lot of people, and, and, and I have another team member, Pine Forge, yep. Ashley Brown, you know, these are people that share the same, the same interests, designing, event planning, 
Um, so you, I molded my team a- around that, like mm-hmm. finding people who I know are invested. This is something that they love to do. And then also um, making sure that I communicate my brand and what I want to accomplish correctly. Communication is key. I'm very big on communicating, making sure that everyone understands that these are the goals that this company would like to reach. And and what what goals do you, what other goals? I want their input. It's not just me. So what do you guys think? What are some goals that you would like to see? Or what are some things that, what what direction would you like to see sincerely elbow? And I think collaborating um, allows us to, to develop our own culture within us, right? And then with that, um, continue to build and develop on that culture. So it's not just my culture, it's, mm-hmm. it's our culture. Because everyone is contributing to this culture. Listen, I don't know if you've ever considered doing leadership training. That was a masterclass. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> I'm trying to contain myself. I'm like, whoa, you're talking about developing an inclusive culture, not just the me culture that you all need to catch, This is a we culture that we all get a chance to develop together. You speak about the value of relationships. And I think sometimes in certain spaces that can kind of be overlooked where it's just, we'll give anybody and everybody a chance, but you're saying, no, 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 no. Yes, there are countless persons who know how to handle a camera, but I don't just need somebody who knows how to shoot good photography. I need somebody that I can trust and someone who trusts me and the shared interests and values. So. Yeah, let me just drop that seed in there on you. If you, if you, you know, I don't know, you have to pray about it and think about it. But I think there's definitely room there for you to also help other people, other young entrepreneurs to say, listen, it's possible to develop team. It's possible to develop culture. Here's some things that I want you to think about going forward. That was excellent. Yes. So, and I think, no, go I, ahead. no, I think with that too, uh, one of the biggest pieces that, um, is important in my life is cultural competence. Mm-hmm. Um, I think working with um, childhood friends like Jasmine, I mean, I love Jasmine. Um, shout out to Jazz. To, yeah, shout out to Jazz. Shout out to Jazz. Um, you have to, I think I think there's, there's um, benefits, huge benefits. I'm not going to say any cons, but there's benefits, but I'm not going to say cons, but there's things that we have to put into place like boundaries, okay. right? Because even though she's a friend, this is still a business. Mm. And we have to make mm. sure that that is remembered. I don't want her to feel like, for me, now, this is me. I, I never want my friend to feel like, okay, because she's my friend, um, it's okay for her to just do this, this, and this. Sure. And she doesn't get to reap the business component of it. I don't, I don't, I don't think that's fair. Um, but also with the pros of it is that um, I get to create expectations Okay. And because I know her so well, I know how to utilize the team member. Yeah. I know how to communicate with her. I know what type of communication she needs. And I think that that is a huge component. Learning Ashley has, because, you know, Ashley graduated. Yeah, before. Year, right. So getting to, you know, coming to Huntsville and really getting to know her and, mm-hmm. and become friends with her. I mean, there, there are definitely positive aspects of working with long-term friends but I must say that boundaries is a true component and when it comes to cultural competence cultural competence has to do with individual to individual as well yeah I function differently from how Jasmine functions and lives her life understanding how she lives her life and how to maneuver with that Mm -hmm. not against it, but along the side of her. How can I modify myself and how can Jasmine modify herself so that our two cultures can work together? We Mm -hmm. all have individual cultures. And that's what I mean by cultural competence, raised differently. You know, we, you know, even when it comes to what we do in our spare time, like those things are important to know, you know, so. Lindsay, write this book, please. (laughs) Develop the online course. Develop the online (laughs) course. Do the keynote. Hey, listen, I'm not just saying this really and truly. Not only are you speaking to our listeners and viewers, you are speaking to me. Um, In pastoring, which is a very people oriented um, profession, and it's not just a profession, much like yourself, there's a sense of call, um, a a vocational 
um, magnetism, if I can say it like that, where we are, we are drawn to what we do. This is not just for income or just for a well curated bio. No, like there's a reason why we're in this and it does have deep roots in our upbringing. But what I'm learning is that that cultural competency piece is of even more importance than I'm going to put into words right now. Um, Aubrey Malfers, who's a leadership consultant in his book, Look Before You Lead, speaks about that, that every pastor comes to a congregation with his or her own culture. And every congregation has their own culture comprised of beliefs, values, and behavior. And so what you just shared with us is true, not only in an ecclesial setting where I work, not only in a design space where you work, but I think just for relationships in general, that's important to remember that when you meet another person, it is auto automatically there's cultural clash, connection, differences that have right. to be explored and communication is essential. I just kind of want to explore this a little bit more. So when it comes to the communication component of discerning culture and being able to align, you you shared, you shared with us, okay, on one hand, there are innumerable positives and pluses and advantages to working with people. You know, you don't even remember when you met Jasmine. She's just always been around. Yeah, she's always been there. Yes. And vice versa, right? And you, you've known Ashley long enough to have, again, a, a volume of experiences on which you all together as a team can stand on a foundation of trust, mutual respect, courtesy, and yet the boundaries component where communication comes in, um, how do you go about communicating clearly while being mindful of emotions and open to, okay, scratch that. Okay. No, keep that, don't scratch that, keep that, but let me say it a different way. <laughs> how do you communicate across the lines of differences of opinion? Mm. Mm. Okay, so that, so, so let me say this, you know, give it, okay, so, you know, I went to school in, um, for psychology, so mm -hmm. my therapy background, um, you know, I was, I'm a therapist, so my therapy background truly gave me a skill set for this, I will say Ooh. that, that's where I learned a lot of how to, um, you know, Kind of interact and, and work with people and yeah. it's, it's funny because um now that i'm transitioning you know i'll, I'll be transitioning to full entrepreneurship soon is my goal sure. um to do just event planning and i was uh one day i was uh talking to my mom and i was like man you know you spent all this money i then went to grad school i'm a therapist and i i feel like i'm not going to use it but then i had to sit and think and i said well wait I use this skill set every day. Mm. I use this skill set when I'm meeting clients, working with clients, working with my team. And I think that I this this I needed to do that. Wow. To get to this. I remember when I was in high school. Man, my customer service skills, it was a struggle, Richard. I'm okay. telling you. I remember <laughs> my boss at the grocery store pulled me to the side and he said, I know you don't mean any harm, but some of the some of the customers. And so <laughs> it, I really think that he knew that this was going to be my my purpose and yes. that I needed to begin to shape that skill set. And so I'm so grateful that I went on that journey. I'm grateful that I had that I have I have had and have the opportunity to be a therapist. And so those things definitely, those skill sets definitely help shape how I communicate. Now I'm not perfect, Richard. Yeah. There are some times when we, we hit a difference of opinion and it is a struggle. I think one of the key elements is self-awareness. Mm. <laughs> Richard, if you you got to have self-awareness. Like, it's funny. The other day, I, so I, I know my, I know Jasmine. I know my friend, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, <laughs> I was saying, it was like two weeks ago. Um, I can't remember what it was, but I called her about something. Oh, oh, oh it was about taking a picture for my website so I could put it on the website. And um, I knew it was something. I was asking her to do something that I knew she didn't feel comfortable about mm -hmm. and we had a difference of pain she felt this way and i'm like well jasmine you could do this 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 and this because that's what Lindsay would do right, right? but i but i knew that that 
was not her. Like she's not gonna do this, 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 and this. Because mm-hmm. she's not Lindsay, right? Jasmine is gonna maneuver how she feels comfortable. So that conversation happened at like eleven o'clock at night. Mm. So I called her private ten o'clock in the morning. The first thing I said was, you know, I really wanna apologize. Wow. I said, because you know what? I don't feel like I took in account um how you felt and what you felt comfortable with. And we instantly went into compromise mode. So how what what can we do to to get the task accomplished with keeping in mind what you feel comfortable with and and and, and what the task what task needs to be accomplished? Yeah, and that's key. Mm. That's key. Really but you is. have to be self aware. And and when I say that, I know me. I know I was doing the most, Richard, that night. <laughs> I know me. I know. Yeah. I know. I wasn't doing my friend right. So, sure. and being able to acknowledge that because we're not perfect. Yeah. It was other fucking night. I was tired. I was ready to go to bed. I was trying to get this done. And I don't think I took a minute to stop mm-hmm. and consider what was going on with my friend. And I think that that's the key and being able to acknowledge that, own that, and and, and, and acknowledge that with her so that she knows, I, I, I realized yeah. that wasn't okay. So how can we maneuver forward? I'm big. How sure. can we move forward? So. Sure. So now, as we've explored the composition of a team and the strengthening of a team, share an instance when everything kind of came together as a team. It could be Mm -hmm. around an event that you all pulled off and you all just looked at each other and said, wow. Or maybe it was outside of an event. Share an event or an experience where the pieces came together and your team, you all were clicking on all cylinders. Mm, I'm going to say Saturday night, fresh. You get a fresh event, Rich. Yes, indeed. <laughs> um, we were planning a 40th, I planned a 40th birthday party. Mm-hmm. Um, and so with this new brand, I've added in a few key pieces to ensure that people understand the luxury nature of, of my business. So I have included um, Butler's butler style event attendees okay and so i have two members who do um actually i have three other team members besides jasmine and ashley which is kiera sean and alberto Mm -hmm. and they um are key pieces because they help with the facilitation of the event so that's like setup and carrying you know carrying to have any equipment and so they also work um as attendees and their butler style which means you know they have on white gloves um you know they have on these nice you know shirt pants and so this is my first time introducing it in the event yeah the event style was like a lounge style feel you know guests come in and you know they kind of walk around and act and I didn't know how it was going to go because you also have to have a a certain personality you have to have a, a certain demeanor and nature to be able to to, to do it and execute it the way I wanted to see it executed. Sure. <laughs> and so seamless. They executed seamless. I mean, it was such a key element in the event. People were talking about it. It was something new to the Huntsville area. And so, I mean, everything fell into place that, and we all talked about it. You know, we all talked about it. And it was funny because um, at the end of the event, my feet were hurting, so I couldn't yeah. help my feet to hurt because I was doing so much moving around, so I couldn't help them clean up as much, and I started tearing up in the elevator as we all were walking downstairs, and I was like, I'm just so sorry, you guys, that I couldn't help clean up as much as I usually do, and right then and there, I knew my team was my team because they instantly said, Lindsay, you don't have to cry. It's okay. Mm. We have you. We're, we're, we're in this together, and look, I'm tearing up now because I I just it was a powerful moment for us you know here I am beating myself up because there are times that I don't allow myself to be human my feet were hurting I mean I can only do what I could do you know yeah, what I mean? that's real and so I couldn't even allow myself to be human you know I was like man like I don't want them to feel you know I'm big on my team I don't want them to feel like I just left them to the side you know <laughs> to the side or they had to do everything you know I want them to feel like you know I'm, I'm a part of this team. You know, I want you to remember, I'm still part of this team. I'm helping you guys clean up. And they just, you know, they reassured me it was okay. Like anytime you need us, when do we have you? It's okay. You did so much. And yeah. so that was, that was a really good moment for us. Yeah. That's profound. 
that's profound. Mm, I'm just kind of glorying and basking in my own imaginative recreation of this experience. I mean, <laughs> I, I was in the room seeing it all come together in my mind and I was in the elevator with you and just that, that, that not only literal embrace, but, but just relational embrace, the mm -hmm. affirmation that the little things, you talk about details in terms of what you do for others, but it takes just as much intentionality and focus on details to develop cohesiveness and to maintain right. that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is spoken, but you know, there's always from a psychological standpoint, there's a lot that's unspoken mm -hmm. um, for it to come together in that poignant way, especially around a moment where you were literally feeling your own limitations right. and for them to say, Hey, listen, this is why we are a team. This mm -hmm. is why we are here to support one another because there will be moments where the roles will be reversed right. and one or two other team members might feel their own limitations in whatever space of life that is. Um, it could be physical, yeah, my feet hurt. It could be relational, my family has something going on and mm -hmm. we all fill in the gaps. Already, Sincerely L has received recognition and you've had the opportunity to be displayed on platforms such as OWN TV, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So looking forward, where do you see Sincerely L in say five years? Man, man, man. that's a loaded question. Um, well, one of my biggest goals um, is to be a traveling event planner. I never, I never wanted to be just stationed. So right now I service Maryland and Alabama, but my goal is to be able to service, you know, all the states. You know, I want to be able to travel. So I definitely see that being in place. And um, I, one of my goals that I'm, I'm really thinking about is also creating my own um, venue okay. that, that speaks to the brand. Um, and another thing that we're working on as well is um, Sincerely L Collection okay. um, that specializes in like bridal accessories and, and things like that. So I'm hoping that that definitely um, is is full blown in the mm -hmm. next five years. So I'm really looking forward to that and, and designing the things for those lines. So. Uh -huh. Listen, everybody, if you have been inspired and blessed by this conversation. I want you to leave some comments in the comment section so that Lindsay can know, listen, what you've shared speaks to me and share this message with other people. They will be encouraged, not just by what Lindsay does, but why she does it. And I want you to connect with her because for you, an array of luxury experiences awaits. Maybe you've been thinking, you know what? She is speaking to me. I might not be able to do what she does, but she can do it for me. So wherever you are, if you are in the United Kingdom, if you are in California, if you are in New Zealand, if you live in Hong Kong, if you're in South Africa, if you're in Canada, wherever you are, I want you to make contact with Lindsay. Lindsay, let us know how listeners and viewers can connect with you. How can they follow you to keep up with what's going on with you and Sincerely L? We're definitely on um, all platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, mm -hmm which is at Sincerely L Designs. Um, definitely check us out on our website. Look at our portfolio. We have a lot of great pictures on there. Um, SincerelyL.com. And mm -hmm. um, feel free to email me, designs at SincerelyL.com. We would love to hear from you guys. All of these will be in the description so that you can go and have quick access to them. Lindsay, thank you so much for joining us in the living room today. I enjoyed my time. I hope you allow, I hope you allow me to come back. Oh yeah. This won't be the last time. In fact, why don't we make a plan to come back together and bring some of the team members as well? Oh, absolutely. I would love to hear from Jasmine and Ashley and others to get a sense of their perspective in the design process. And I just want to say again, sister to brother, we go back. I am proud of what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I that love what I'm Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And I wish and pray nothing but the best for you as you go forward. Now, this is kind of untraditional. I know I've just kind of seemed like I've given the big close, but there's another question that has just come to mind. In fact, it came to mind earlier, forgot it, and it's come back to mind now. I want to ask you, you study psychology, you have and had experiences in the therapy space. How do you go about preserving your own inspiration or renewing it. In other words, at a certain point, Lindsay has to take care of herself so mm. that she can take care of others. What do you do? We'll let this be our final question that will take <laughs> us on out. 
Well, I'm a huge advocate for self-care. You would see that on my personal Instagram page. I talk a bit about it all the time. Um, the funny aspect about my self-care is event planning is my self-care, um, which is, which is, 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 it's, it's a benefit. Um, so like when I say that the designing component, like when I get to sit down and create an event design, that's part of my self-care. Um, I, I'm really big on like me time. Mm -hmm. um, so I do, I take myself on a lot of dates by myself just so I can have time to reflect on me, learn more about me because yeah. once again, I'm a huge advocate, of, advocate about self-awareness. Mm -hmm. So those are things that I do to kind of make sure that I take care of myself because that is a true statement. Richard, I say it all the time. Before I can take care of someone else, I have to make sure that I and my mental health and who I am is in a healthy space. Yeah. And that's key. That's key. That's key to being a leader. For sure. And and working on a team and, and growing a team is the leader has to ensure that she is implementing um, healthy leadership skills. Mm -hmm. making sure that she is taking care of herself or he is taking care of herself and him himself. And um, that's, that's, that's a huge piece. I'm glad you asked that. Thank you so much. I think self-care and self-awareness are relatives. In fact, they might be identical twins. Um, to illustrate from, again, what I do, I learned and I'm still learning because I haven't completely broken the, the pattern that I am better in board meetings on a Tuesday evening than I am on a Sunday morning. Mm. Now, Sunday mornings are traditional times for board meetings in churches, right? Especially in, mm. in our denominational right. space, that is. Um, and after years of kind of showing up to Sunday board meetings and feeling myself physically and emotionally, normally still recovering from the previous day, um, I, I feel like sometimes I'm a little bit shorter on Sunday mornings mm. than I am on Tuesdays. And for a while, I felt badly about that, right? To say, man, I, I should have it all together on Sunday mornings. Until I started having these conversations, doing some reading and learning, hey, man, that's just self-awareness. You're saying, listen, guys, I'm not my, the best version of myself so, right? when we get here at nine o'clock. You know, this is why sometimes it may seem like pastor's rolling his eyes, right? Um, but on Tuesdays, even I said, man, where's all this energy from? Well, you had two days to rest. Yeah to eat some good food, to, to, to kind of let your mind be. So I thank you for sharing that perspective, both and that it that is in what I'm doing, it is self-care, but I'm also recognizing that there is a time to get away and just have some me time. And that too is self-care so that I can care for others. Do you encourage that to your team as well? Absolutely. Um, I actually, um, I'm in the middle of, I'm still, it's still developing because my focus has been sincerely all right now, but I have a second business called Enhanced. Okay. And enhanced um, focuses on inner enhancements. And um, I do trainings and workshops surrounding self-care, self-awareness, um, self-esteem, mm -hmm. things of that nature. And so definitely um, I preach to my team all the time, self-care. So they get sick of hearing it sometimes. Yeah. So um, what are we doing for self-care? What are we doing? Do we need a, do we need a minute? Do we mm -hmm. even doing the event? It's funny because I I think I got on Ashley's nerves Saturday. And she said, sit down. You can go sit down. <laughs> I kept telling her to sit down. Y'all want to get off your feet? Do you, you need something to eat? Like, you know, I'm so big on making sure that they practice self-care and they're taking care of it, even in the midst of work. So yeah. um, I definitely preach it. Awesome. Listen, we have been blessed and thoroughly inspired by the sharing from our guest, Miss Lindsay Odima. CEO of Sincerely L Designs. I want you to go check it out and check her out. Connect with her. Send her a direct message on Instagram, Facebook. Check out her website and portfolio. Read about her team. Listen, you want to remember Sincerely L Designs for yourself, for your spheres of influence. And I think you have an experience to remember. That's all we have for this episode of The Living Room. I'm your host, Richard Martin. Our special guest has been Miss Lindsay Odima. Until next time, continue to listen, continue to learn, and continue to live.